good morning class yeah i hope everybody is fine it's lecture number three and um we are looking at teaching the concept of energy as teachers in the making we know one day we'll be in our classrooms trying to impact this knowledge to our students and that is why it is important that we look at how this can be done effectively. In the last lecture, we looked at energy and the sources of energy. And so, we would want to look at how what we have learned can now be given to our students in the classrooms that we'll find ourselves in future. We have not forgotten about COVID-19, and so we want to remind ourselves of the WHO protocols and that which our government have laid down to be followed. And so the greetings, as we can see, washing of hands using running water and the use of sanitizers are key to fighting this pandemic. The general objectives of this lesson, which we would want to look at under the CLOs and then the CLIs, tell us that this lesson will help you to acquire the pedagogical skills to teach energy forms and uses to basic elementary school learners. This can be found in your NTS 1B, 2B, 3A, page 12. NTS 1D, page 12 and page 14. NTS 3E, page 14. NTS 3P, page 14 and NTS 1A, page 12. You are all supposed to take your books and read whatever information is under these statements that we have put up. Now, the CLO is for you to learn how to teach energy to the elementary school learner or learners. We also ask core learning indicators to present or outline a step-by-step -step approach in the teaching of energy to the elementary school learner or learners. Teaching is an act, as I always say, so there are no hard and fast rules about how to teach a given concept. It all depends on your advanced preparation and the facts that you engage in best practices. Are the main focus when it comes to doing teaching and learning. And so for this discussion, would like to
come out with a concept map on energy. This will tell us the areas that we have to delve into when we have to teach energy to our pupils. And so we have areas like sources of energy, forms of energy, use of energy, transformation of energy, and conservation of energy. These areas are key each time you want to look at the concept of energy. Like I said, you don't have to be a robot. All you need to do is to know what your students know. That's their prior knowledge. And based on that, you can start your lesson. So that you can link their prior knowledge to whatever you want to teach. And so we can take this by first looking at what is energy. In our first lecture, um, that's on the teaching portfolios, and even the second lecture, which looked at energy and then the sources of energy, a number of factors were considered once you wanted to teach a concept. So for energy, if you look at energy as a topic, then one would want to know the definition for energy. Again, in science, and for that matter, physics, each time you take a quantity, you are supposed to know the unit in which it is measured. And so we may look at the definition of energy and the unit of energy as well. Now, definition of energy covers two areas. That is, we have energy as ability to do work and energy as a thing. Here, you are supposed to help your students to come to terms with the fact that, for instance, you need a dry cell to make a torchlight function. You need food as a human being to be able to work. A car will need fuel, either petrol, diesel, or gas, to make it function. And so that is where we describe energy as a thing, which when you have would help you to do work. Looking at energy to do work, we can take it from the perspective that when people are hungry, they are inactive. And so usually, if you're an athlete, as we see on our screen, and you want to run, then you must have some energy. And that energy can be obtained from the food you eat. As students, we learn. And before you could have a sound mind to learn, you need energy, which you can also obtain from the food that you eat. The woman you see in the picture is plucking cocoa. If she's hungry, she cannot do this work. And so that's how we can introduce our students to the fact that another definition or way of defining energy is the ability to do work. As for the unit of energy, we have all talked about it, and we know energy is measured in joules. Uh, we also said that we could measure it in calories because each time you take a container and you look at the assay on the container, you realize that they sometimes retain 1.5 calories 
2.5 calories of uh, carbohydrate and so on and so forth. This is telling you the content of energy in that food and so the units of energy can also be in calories. Now we delve into the sources of energy and it is again incumbent upon you to help students to identify or even list the various sources of energy. We've mentioned food as a source of energy. We've mentioned the sun as a source of energy. And so with this, you can help students to mention other sources of energy that we have. In lecture two, we saw these sources. Biomass, gases, biofuel, fossil fuel, uranium, hydropower, tidal and waves, wind, geothermal, and the sun are all sources of energy. Now, if you go back and look at the concept map, you realize that after defining the term energy and looking at the various sources of energy, then we would want to classify the sources of energy into two, renewable and non-renewable. And so you need to carry out some activities that will help these students to be able to identify these sources of energy and classify them as such. So, we learned that the classification is largely based on the availability or abundance of the source. We also saw that we could use the rate of usage and a rate of replenishment to tell whether a source of energy is renewable or non-renewable. So, simple questions can easily help you to get students coming out with which source of energy is abundant in nature and is always being used and does not get finished because of that, that source of energy can easily be classified as renewable source of energy. Equally, you could also carry out some activities to get students to understand that some other source of energy, though they are available, but constant use of those sources of energy would lead to their you know, extinction or they will get finished just because the rate of replenishment is very, very low. It takes long time for these sources of energy to be replenished. Thus, they can call these sources of energy as non-renewable sources of energy. And so on our slides, we can all see how the classification has been done. For renewable or infinite source, say the source of energy is available or abundant in large quantity, it is always in use. But then it can be replenished within a short time. If you come to that of the non-renewable or the infinite, the finite source, then you may be looking at the fact that it is limited in abundance. For instance, the oil we have in Ghana will get finished one day. And the oil we have did not come in a day. It took a long time. If you remember in the last lecture, I hinted that 
we have oil because of some of the activities that went on during the slave trade. So you realize that in areas where there have been mass deaths, people have died in large numbers, they have oil. Um, this, when you research, you will find more. And so our oil will get finished one day. That's what we mean by it is limited in, in supply. We use oil every day, okay? Your car will use oil. You even use part of the oil, that is fuel, in the form of gas to cook. So all these things, when we continue doing this with time, the oil will get finished. And it takes a long time to replace. Because of that, your students should be able to tell that that is a non-renewable source of oil, uh, energy. And so they should be able to look at the source of energy and classify them into the two sources. We are supposed to get very interesting activities for students to do this. And the only way is for you to do advanced preparation. After students had gone through those activities, they should be able to tell you that these are the sources of renewable energy, the wind, Biomass, biofuel, biogas, hydropower, running water, tidal and waves, solar energy that is sun, and also the geothermal energy. Now, gases are also part of this category. When a similar activity is mounted for students, they also come out with the fact that coal, natural gas, petroleum, uranium, or better still, nuclear energy are also sources of renewable energy. Now, in your discussion with the students, you should also find out which of them is sustainable. Okay, which of them, whether it is the solar, whether it's the fossil fuel, which we are obtaining our petroleum, in which case we are talking about coal, natural gas, and even the oil, they should be able to tell you which of those sources are sustainable. Now, we'll go on commercial break. But when we come back, we'll be looking at the forms of energy. Because looking at the concept map, we saw that after treating the sources of energy, one other form that you lesson must take is the forms of energy. Um, for the commercial break, we we'll want to show a short video on COVID-19, so sit down, relax, and students, see you for the next lesson.